In this video, we'll identify the area of the brain that appears to be the most important in memory, which hopefully you remember from the anatomy chapter, and then we'll explain the differences between anterograde and retrograde amnesia. What area of the brain do we think of when we think of memory? Thinking back to um, the anatomy chapter, hopefully you had the hippocampus pop into your, to your mind. So let's say that all together, hippocampus. And here we find it in the brain. Remember, it's one of those subcortical areas that's deep in the brain, um, found in the temporal lobe area. It's active during memory formation and memory retrieval. But now, wait, we've talked about in the previous video, videos about three different types of long-term memory. So are those all formed in the same way? So is this the case for all types of long-term memory? Is the hippocampus needed to form procedural, semantic, and episodic memories? So that's what that assignment that you're going to submit to me is going to be, imagine if your hippocampus was removed, would those memories be intact? So studying amnesia helps us clarify distinction between different types of memory. It relates the brain regions to the types of memory. Amnesia is memory loss caused by brain damage. Now, you could go turn on the TV at like 1, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, tune into some soap opera, and of course there's going to be somebody that has amnesia and they can't remember anything about who they are or their past. Now that's different because that's not necessarily, I mean, perhaps they had some sort of head trauma or something, but that's different. That's the very Hollywood type of amnesia. Um, what we're going to talk about is amnesia, which is memory loss that's caused by this brain damage. So there's two major types of amnesia that we're going to talk about. The first is anterograde amnesia. Now this is the loss of ability to form me new memories after the brain damage. So think about that movie 51st Kisses or 51st Dates, I can never remember. Um, but you know, um, Drew Barrymore, she couldn't remember anything after she had that traumatic head um, brain injury. And so um, that's the idea is that she had this inability to form new memories after her brain damage going forward. So retrograde amnesia is the loss of memory for events that happened before the brain damage. So older memories, memories from the past. So that's a lot like what we see in soap operas like Days of Our Lives, right? Someone comes back into town and they can't remember anything from their past, you know, including personal information. But anyways, those are, it's a loss of memory of events before the brain damage. So here's another way of looking at it. Here we have the trauma, the damage. Anterograde is where you can't form new memories going forward. Retrograde is going back in the past where you have trouble remembering things from the past. You can't recall those old memories. Now, this, these distinctions are typically used for episodic memories, but you can also think about them in terms of semantic memories and procedural memories in terms of, is it, do we have memories that we formed before the brain damage? And do we have memories of, or can we form new memories after the brain damage? And this is an important, um, for an assignment that you'll be doing in class to understand these distinctions.